the second clause that we deal with with ISO 27001 is of course leadership. Now leadership is a really important part of 27001 because if you don't have top management support and leadership and commitment then let's be honest it's going to be an uphill struggle. So let's take a look at what it actually says in the standard and we'll pull that apart and I'll give you some tips and tricks and tools that you can use that will make this whole process a whole lot easier. So here we are in the standard itself and we're at clause five, which is leadership and leadership is made up of three parts. It is leadership and commitment. It is policy and it's also organizational roles and responsibilities and authorities. So let's take a look at what's required here. Now, the first thing that you need to determine is um, what do we mean by top management? Because that's what this clause is actually all about. If you look right here at the very start, it says that top management shall demonstrate leadership and commitment with respect to the information security management system by, and then it gives you a list of things that it would be expected to happen. So who is top management in your organization? Now it's top management in relation to, or in respect of the, the information security management system. So this means your scope. If you're a small organization, the likelihood is top management is indeed the people that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's the managing director or it's the owner of the business and then their direct reports. If you're a multinational organization, of course, and you have uh, many different divisions and you have many different managing directors and you have many different presidents and vice presidents and CTOs and COOs and all the other people who sit in the C-suite, top management is going to be quite far removed from you. So you need to be able to identify someone as far up uh, within the organization as possible to be able to demonstrate leadership and commitment that flows from them across the organization. Why is that important? Well, um, if you don't have leadership uh, and leadership commitment, the whole process for developing and implementing 27001 and a security culture is going to be extremely difficult. But what do we expect from them? Well, as I've said, the list is right here in front of us. So number one, ensuring the information security policy and security objectives are established and are compatible with the strategic direction of the organization. Now this training, this video, um, or these videos aren't here just to blandly read you something that you can read yourself. I want to give you tips and tools and tricks that will actually help you. So how do you demonstrate this? Well, quite simply, as an auditor, I want to see that a conversation has taken place. I want to see that you've had that conversation where you've identified what the, secu the security objectives are and that you've relayed those to the uh, top management and that they support the overall business objectives. You can demonstrate that through um, a meeting notes. You can demonstrate that through uh, an invite sat in your calendar. Show me the, the meeting. When did this take place? But more importantly, that you can demonstrate that through a information security policy that includes the objectives that has been signed off by the top management team. So a physical document that says, this is our policy, these are our objectives, and here you can see the support and commitment by the head of the organization or the top management um, uh, representative. So the next point, how do you do this? Well, ensuring the integration of the management system uh, into the organization's processes. So this is again, where you can demonstrate this through the use of uh, a management review team. And we're gonna talk about who they are in a few moments, but essentially what you need to have is a line into, a dotted line into each area of the business so that you can then implement your management system in such a way that it complements and supports their particular objectives and their requirements too. And again, that can be demonstrated through meetings that you might have with um, the head of procurement or the IT team or with the sales and marketing team or whoever it might be. 
What next? Well, ensuring that you have the resources needed for the information security management system uh, and that they are available. Resources, of course, most people, when they think of resources, their mind instantly goes to financial resources and financial support. And yes, of course, financial support is important, but also time. Do you have the time? Are you just really, really busy and you were given this task of implementing 27001 because you were out of the room when the decision was being made? As a auditor, uh, when I'm looking at 27001 and its implementation and leadership and commitment, I want to know the person who's involved in this or the people have the time to be able to uh, dedicate um, to the topic and be able to to um, adequately support it in its uh, its rollout and its implementation. But resources also means uh, financial um, uh, and time and facilities and technical. So there is a number of areas that you need to think about when it comes down to the resources that you might need. Next, how do you demonstrate leadership and commitment? Well, the top management will communicate the importance that an effective information security management system and of conforming to the information security management system requirements. Now, two very important points here. They need to be supportive to you and for you, not just when you're in the room. We all know that certain people will absolutely be on board with uh, information security and ISO 27001 whilst they're in that meeting. But then when they go into their own meetings with the, you know, with their team, perhaps they may be a little less complimentary and they may be kind of saying, well, yeah, we've got to do this, guys, because, you know, we need to tick that box. Or I know it's a pain and I know it's boring, but let's get on it. Let's just do it. That is not showing leadership and commitment. We need them to be supportive of your, uh, your information security management system, even if you're not in the room. And they also need to demonstrate or to be able to articulate the issues or the ramifications of non-conformance, of the impact of not conforming with the standard. So there needs to be some um, carrot and stick around all of this. Um, I'm much more in favor of the carrot than I am the stick, um, more about giving people the positives than the negative side of things. But they need to communicate the importance of it. Again, how do you demonstrate that? How do you demonstrate the commitment um, and leadership? Well, how about when you first roll out your program, write an email to the entire business. You write it and you talk about why this is in uh, ISO 27001 is important. You can talk about the benefits uh, around 27001 and it can, what it can do for you as an organization. And you can obviously talk about some of the negatives, some of the darker sides, but try and focus on the positives. Then what you do is you send that to your top management and you say, could you send this out please to the entire business under your name? When they've communicated that out to the business, it looks like they've sent that and it immediately sends a positive message that this is important and why it's important to the organization. Now, some top management may actually say that they want to do it themselves. They may be very comfortable at writing down, uh, you know, what their thoughts are around uh, ISO 27001. Personally, I like to try and remove as much friction as I possibly can, but have that conversation. And then when you've sent it, save that email. That's great evidence for auditors when we come in, consultants like us, and we ask, how, have you, how can you demonstrate leadership and commitment from top management? You can hold up this email that says, look, this email was sent out. And not only that, they send out an email every month or every week, and it supports what we're doing. Now, the rest of the team don't need to know that you're the one crafting those words, but it demonstrates the commitment uh, out to the business. And who knows, before very long, your leadership team may start to catch on and start to write their own emails about this. You know, it's early days and we can only hope. So what next? We need uh, 
leadership and commitment to um, uh, demonstrate that um, uh, they can ensure that the information security management system in, uh, achieves its intended outcomes. Well, if we're going to make sure it, it does that, you need to, again, have the objectives, you need the measures in place. And again, I would ask you to evidence that simply by showing me regular meetings, whether they are minuted or whether they're just in your diary that shows that you have a regular catch up with your top management to um, uh, to show them, you know, how things are progressing, how information security is being embedded within your organization. Next, they can show commitment by directing and supporting persons to contribute to the effectiveness of the information security management system. This kind of speaks back to this point about communicating when you're not in the room. So it's about them saying they're supporting the rest of the business and um, those people who are directly a part of your management review team, um, that they will actually um, know what the top management require and what they need, what they want them to do. So you can do that again through minute meetings by having meetings put in, in people's diaries. Promoting continual improvement. This is something again, which is quite easy to demonstrate by um, implementing the management review process. So the management review team that you're going to have in place, but also by having the commitment to continual improvement in your information security policy, which we'll talk about in a second. And finally, under leadership and commitment, supporting other relevant management roles to demonstrate their leadership as it applies to their areas of responsibility. Again, top management should be saying to their next level down or their direct reports, however you want to term it, information security is important within finance, it's important within facilities, it's important within IT, it's important within HR, it's important with etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And they should be supporting them by again giving them time to participate and to be involved in information security practices and processes to help improve things for your organization and help embed ISO 27001. So that's leadership and commitment. Let's take a look at policy. 5.2 is policy. Top management shall establish an information security policy that and then it outlines exactly what is expected. Now, I do cover uh, information security policy on a separate video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But suffice to say that this is a overarching information security policy and includes a number of uh, commitments that uh, need to be clearly displayed and demonstrated. Remember that an information security policy is a statement of fact, it's a statement of truth, and it's a physical document. And that's all I'm going to say about the policy piece, because, as I've said, I cover that in a separate video uh, and, um, and I write about it on our website, which, again, you can go and take a look. The, uh, the link is in the, uh, the post notes. Um, it is uh, an important document, clearly, you know, it states that the policy shall be docu available as documented information and be communicated within the organization and to interested parties. So whoever those interested parties are um, uh, is determined by yourself. You did that, if you remember, through clause four, context of the organization. And the final section within uh, the leadership clause is around organizational roles and responsibilities and authorities. So this is important that top management have established the responsibilities and authorities for roles relevant to information security. Now, this means when we talk about authorities here, we're talking about perhaps uh, levels of authorization that you can sign off on certain uh, certain um, uh, purchasing uh, power that you might have. So um, team leaders and team managers might have a certain sign off, whereas uh, the head of an organization might be able to sign off on greater, uh, greater amounts. What I would also suggest here as a practical tip is to, first of all, look at your job descriptions. What did they say about roles and responsibilities in related relation to information security? 
but also look at uh, job contracts, um, contractor contracts. What did they say about uh, people's roles and responsibilities towards information security, data protection, that kind of thing. Finally, as a tool, as a mechanism that we use in, in consultants like us, we have a roles and responsibilities uh, document that we, um, uh, we will take people through, um, which outlines the role of the senior managers and the re responsibilities that they have towards information security, uh, the management review team, what their roles are, so how often we expect them to come to meetings, what we will discuss on those meetings. So they have very clear uh, and clearly defined roles and responsibilities. Um, you might also want to include within that, uh, that document uh, the roles and responsibilities of your crisis management team as well, so that they understand what is expected of them uh, during a so there you incident are. or a crisis. Clause five, leadership. Next clause is going to be clause six, planning. But until then, thank you very much for watching. And uh, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.